Right, well, I guess it's been a long time between drinks. Uh, so basically, look, I've been a bit quiet because recently when I was plugging out my Zoysia, so extending my trial right towards the end of the day, uh, it was fairly windy sort of day anyway, long story short, my camera took a dive, landed face first into the ground, and I'm hoping that it's just the lens that's buggered. I'm due to get a new lens on Monday, but today I'm actually using somebody else's equipment, and today I am joined here with Dan, Dan Caddy from The Green and Gold Life. Namaste, thanks for having me, Baker. You're welcome, mate. And what are you doing all the way here <laughs> from SA? So for you guys who don't know, Dan has a channel called The Green and Gold Life, and he is based in Adelaide. I'm based in Scone in the Hunter Valley. There's quite a bit of distance, but I do believe you've actually just come back from Brisbane. That's right. Don't tell mum, I went and picked up a uh, motorcycle and sidecar jobby. So that's parked out the front, so I'm on the way home at the moment. Nice. So I thought I'd swing past BK's place because he's forgotten more about turf than I'll ever know. So I've come to absorb some information. I'll absorb something. I'm not. <laughs> Wisdom might be a stretch, but you know, you, ne you never know. Um, so look, today what I thought we'd do is I'm going to give Dan a little bit of uh, mo time. I'm going to let him have a play around with some of the toys that he doesn't actually normally get access to. So you're used to, well, you actually got a John Deere. I've got a John Deere. We've both got the same rider mowers, yep. essentially. Um, you've got Scotties, I've got Scotties. But what you don't probably have is a couple of Greens Masters. That's right, yeah, yeah. Precision equipment, mate. Precision we don't have equipment. any of that. Just on that. Now, you guys actually haven't probably seen this either, but I have actually inherited another machine so i oh, must be good mate eh? hey this I've, guy i've now banned myself from any further <laughs> mail purchases that's it so uh i'm gonna let dan have a play with the new beast which is a toro greens master 1600 so it's the wide one it's got about a 26 inch cut off the top of my head uh whereas the 1000 is a 21 inch cut it's currently away down the south coast with sorry the central coast with trent from central coast cylinder miles he has got that in his care at the moment giving it a sharpen and a bit of love post renovation so last time we we're here uh, we we're sort of in a recovery phase of renovation as you can see now things are looking fantastic we're really sort of bounced back what's your thoughts mate what do you think like because you've not been here before um, is it okay is there something that needs improving what's what's your thoughts man let the people know what it's really like because they see me what's your thoughts uh, I'm no sports turf guru mate let me put it that way um, it's low lower than a snake's anus mate and it looks good um, uh, there is a little bit of seed head around, so um, yep. it's, it's actually a little bit comforting to know that um, Brenton's having the same drama I have. I've got a lot of seed head, and uh, so is Brenton at this stage. Um, they're both in the green and the surrounds, so um, we're, we're sort of sharing the same pain a little bit. But uh, apart from that, it looks really good. Um, yeah, no, nah, really good. So you want to have a little play with one of the machines? If I can, please, mate. Sure, yeah. mate. Sure. <laughs> Let's have a look. Let's go and have a look at it anyway, and um, we'll show the people what we've got. Beauty. Cool. This is the Beast. Now, a lot of you guys have probably noticed this is one of the, the machines that Connor Ward uses over there in the States. And in Australia, these things are actually a very, very rare mower. Now, Trent used to spend, or Trent worked at Toro Australia for quite a lot of time, and they um, actually was talking to him about it. He sort of threw a figure at me that for every 50 Rings Master 1000's Toro Cell, they sell one of these, so it's a one in 50. So, Australian machine from, Australian delivered new, and um, I bought it second hand with about 300 hours on it. Um, and it also too has a groomer, which is pretty awesome, and obviously the wider cut. So what my plans are for this machine going forward, at the moment I'm using it as my greens mower, but going forward I'll use it on my front lawn in front of the house. Now, the machine behind Dan, the big 3250, can quite easily cope with that with that lawn as well. Although being, I guess, a fairly tight area with trees and, and shrubs and hedges and stuff, turning time and time again, it's probably potentially gonna cause some wear with the wheels as it turns. So I'm gonna use this one here on that side and along the street, because obviously having the street trees, again, the big beast there is just probably a little bit too too fussy to, to whiz in and out. So that's it, they're my mowers, I've banned myself, no further, um, no more mowers allowed unless I clear some out first. Unless no. I clear some out first. Wouldn't believe it, mate. Wouldn't believe it. <laughs> so, BK, you mentioned that it's um, it's got about what did you say, 350 hours? Is that 350 ish, something? something like that? So, is that is that a lot of 356? Is that a lot of hours for a machine like this? Because no, when... look, it, it's not. It's not really. Um, and you know, the you, for the sort of mowing that these things do, no, 
no, it's not. It hasn't had a lot of use, so it was quite a good, a good, a good find. Yeah, yeah. And um, I suppose from from my from my side of things, you know, obviously I, I run a Scotty. Yep. And and I love that machine. You know, it's great for a domestic application. So, what are the some of the differences we can expect between, say, a Toro machine like this on a on a daily mow sense? On a daily mow sense. So obviously these things, a lot of investment goes into these because these are built to be a greens mower. That's what they're for. The precision, everything is like, I was gonna say millimeter, but it's like point millimeter accuracy. About a couple of yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's advanced talking. <laughs> uh, yeah, so everything about this machine is designed to give the optimum, the absolute best of the best results. So whereas Scotty, you know, you might have in the standard front roller, you might have that slack in that plate. Mm. Um, there's nothing in this apart from solid like this is everything is bearings everything is designed to put the hard yards in time and time again there's a lot of geometry going on with the reel um, there's all that sort of stuff that goes that goes on with it obviously the weight as well um, it gives it a nice contact without being over the top at about 105 or 106 kilos or something like that um, and maintenance maintenance with these things is also easy like it's designed because obviously it's one of these machines that you know, it's not a throwaway machine. It's a machine that is, is you know, serviced and repaired where required, um, rather than it's you know three years old trying to chuck it in. Mm. So yeah. So, um, what are your thoughts in comparing, say, something like this to maybe say a Supercut or a sixty-five or something like that? What are your thoughts there, or a Queen maybe? Queen, Queen's a, is is a different beast again. It's even heavier than this again. And they're really specific machines. They're really just for a bowling green that's flat. They're big, heavy, they're big, heavy girls, hey? They are big, heavy girls. Um, the, the 65, again, was probably more designed back in the day to be a cricket, uh, a cricket mower, so cricket, wicket, ro uh, mower, sorry. Um, and the super cut, geez, we're getting back now. Like, <laughs> yeah, look, again, probably more tennis courts were yeah. where, where they were at, you know. And obviously the Scotty, the 45 that everyone knows and loves, was really just the home, was the premium home lawn machine. Yeah. So, um, whereas this is the premium, you know, golf course equipment, you know. So, uh, yeah. Beauty. Well, that's all the questions I have oh, that's <laughs> for the guru. Is, is that it? Is that <laughs> it? So, um, yeah, look, mate, I'm more than happy for you to take a little uh, a little lap if you reckon you're up for the challenge. and. Yeah, mate, I'll give it a whirl. I'll try anything once. Well, maybe not anything. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, all good, man. And if you uh, pass that test, you beauty. <laughs> we'll let him loose.
That was your first time ever yep with both machines yep how did you find that compared to the scotty that you're used to so um i'm pretty comfortable with machinery i like to think myself pretty comfortable with machinery and it took me one or two minutes just to work out you know the the drive and the dead man switch and all that sort of stuff Work up a sweat, man. That's because I was doing silly things like trying to drag it back and all of this. So BK showed me how you actually turn around on a green and all of that. And I kind of worked it out after that, but um, completely different. So um, he was telling me that I have to, you know, take to the field first and then do a perimeter pass. Whereas I'll do my perimeter pass first and then take to the field. So um, they were a few of the differences there. And um, it just sat really well on the on the saw profile as well. There wasn't. It doesn't bounce around, does it? No, no, no. And I think I, I attribute that to the weight and the width of the machine as well, and um, and the flat and the flat playing surface. So, how do you um, find the quality of cut compared to what you used to? Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. It's it's a finely tuned instrument, mate. Eh? Like um, worlds apart from the Scotty. Like I, I don't want to knock the Scotty either. That no, does no, a really good job. Scotty, when, Scotty's a great machine. Yeah, Scotty's a great machine. Yeah. Just not, um, um, just not for this application yep. here. And um, yeah, would would I would I be doing my residential lawn with one of these? Probably not. Probably not. Um, you know, uh, where we where we bolt the wheels on the side. You know, that's probably going to hit me garden beds or retaining walls, things of that nature. So they um, can unscrew. They can unscrew. But it's a bit useless if yeah. you need to then use the wheels, which yeah. you would in the residential setting. Yeah. yeah. So um, yeah, moving on. So Dan is the first person. <laughs> to have a go of this on camera apart from me. What do you think? Um, Manoeuvrability, like it's, it's a lot smaller than what I was thinking. Um, I was expecting it to be in real life, maybe another half a machine wider and 30% more manoeuvrable than, um, than what I was expecting. So I was aware that it was rear wheel steer, um, but it turned more like a forklift than, than I was expecting. So, um, as shown by the master a little bit later <laughs> on, like he just turned it on a dime and um, and yeah, again, it sat real well, cut real well and a lot easier to use than, than I was thinking, yeah. Yeah, no, it's, it's a joy to use, isn't it? Mm. It is, it really is. And obviously I cut my teeth on these machines and that's why I said to Dan earlier off camera today, like the reason I keep gravitating back to this stuff is it's it's what I learned on, like back in the, in the 90s when I was an apprentice, man, this is what we had. We had a 1,000 of these, we had a 3,100 of these and I've got the opportunity now to have these things back on my terms and, and that's why I've chased them down. That's why I've bought what I've bought. You know, I've built this up to a point where, you know, I can keep these things. They're not they're not about to go anywhere. Yeah. yeah. So um yeah. But no, I hope you have had a bit of a fun time playing on <laughs> Yeah man, yeah it's good to get, good to go and blow the cobwebs out on something that's, you know, um, industry standard I suppose yeah. and, and having to play with the big boy toys <laughs> like, like I mentioned in my video, all the gear and no idea but um, yeah no it, it it's it's sort of hard to explain like it, it just ran so smooth it, it did what it was supposed to do with minimal fuss yep and you can only imagine i guess this one's got a few hours under a spell not not a huge amount of hours but you just imagine now what a new one's like mm. like because this is by no means clapped out but a new one yeah so uh, I, was, I was uh chatting to bk before what, what do we say like three thousand or do we got 29 29 th uh 2900 hours mm. so just just sub three grand uh three thousand hours and 
to me, to me as an ex earth moving operator, that is just broken in. You know what I mean? Like it's maybe almost ready for its second service sort of thing. Whereas you're you're sort of telling me that this is, you know, it's broken it, in. Yeah, it's broken in, and, and that's why golf courses moved them on because you're running a lot of hydraulics and stuff like that on some pretty expensive surfaces. So mm. you know they're all about yeah leases. Well, it's all about leases and stuff as well. So, oh yeah. yeah. You know everything. Most golf courses lease stuff. Yeah. So turnover, all that sort of stuff. So yeah. 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 And this one's got the the higher height of cut setup. So yeah. So that, that's a bit of a double-edged sword, really. Um, I didn't realise it at the time that it had that, so I'm. This is as low as I can get it now without changing back to a standard height of cut range system. Um, so 12 mil is the height, and that's as low as I can go without changing it back. But then, if you change it back, 12 is the highest you can go. So it's sort of a shame, really, because as I said, it's built to be a greens mower. If I could sort of have that height range between, you know, six and 15, it'd be great. But you know, I think it's going to be fine. So what? Um, what would be the minimum yard size? So let's say, let's say I'm not short a quid, mate, and I've got uh, I've got a few acres. What would be the minimum size lawn you think I could run one of these on? If you had no obstacles. So the key to this is, and the reason I guess I've got a lot of la lard. I've got a lot of yard. I've got a lot of lard too. I've got a lot of, <laughs> I've got a lot of yard here, but I've created a few obstacles, particularly in front of the house. So we've got hedges right up. We've got rose gardens. We've got all that sort of stuff. This mower will smash through that, no worries at all. But obviously, lots of tight turns, and they do pivot on one wheel. That's when you're going to get wear. So if you've got lots of tight turns, this is still probably not the machine. But if you've got a wide open area, and you've got the money, and you want to splash it about, even a thousand square meters, really, let's be honest. You know, if you had a thousand square meters of open, open lawn, then and you just decided that you wanted to be king of the street, then yeah, knock yourself out. Mm. But anything less than that, really, most will find something like this. Um, because it's still only a few passes, mm. like 26 inches, it doesn't take long to get over a lawn. Mm. So, um, you know, I mean, we've just covered this in, in next to no time. Mm. And, um, you know, I can cover my front yard in that in under 10 minutes. <laughs> so, you know, and that's a double cut. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Well, I suppose that's just about, about it for the day, man. Yeah, mate, yeah, beer o'clock. Beer o'clock, <laughs> it is actually. We're going out for dinner pretty shortly and all that sort of gear. Damn shout, I heard. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, left his wallet behind. <laughs> but uh, look, man, I hope you've enjoyed yourself. Hope you've enjoyed yeah, having a bit of a play with some of the gear and yeah, yeah. all that yeah. sort of stuff. Thanks, thanks for having me out. Appreciate really appreciate it, it mate. Yeah. yeah, you take it easy. And um, anyway, guys, look, if you haven't gone to over to Green and Gold Life, go and check it out. And um, I'll put a link somewhere yep. to do something. And um, yeah, go and check out what Dan's up to. He's he's got a oh, probably going to be out by the time this one goes out. But got a bit of a comedy video coming out. Yeah, yeah, a little bit of a Renault. Not safe for work, mate. Don't, don't play it at work. Not safe guys. for work. <laughs> the mind boggles. But anyway, guys, have a fantastic weekend. We'll catch you next time on the Aussie Lawn.